In this video, we're going to be implementing sign in with Apple within a React app. The first thing that you need to do is to create an Apple developer account. So if you go to developer.apple.com slash programs, you can enroll. It may take up to 40 hours. They ask you for a lot of things like your ID. It also costs around $99 a year. So I would recommend only doing this if you need to for work and to expense that account, unless you're an iOS developer and have an account for another reason. Once you go ahead and do that, we're going to go into the Amplify console. I'm going to create a new app. I'll create an app backend. I'll call it CUA for sign in with Apple. And I'll confirm my deployment. Now we'll open up the admin UI. And then I will enable authentication. I'm going to add login mechanism and choose sign in with Apple. You'll see that a redirect URL is generated, and this is why I needed to do this first before doing all the Apple side configuration. I'm going to go back over to the Apple developer portal, and I am going to sign in. So once you've signed in there, you may need to generate a certificate. I know that I did, so if you do not have one, go ahead and generate that. There'll be steps outlined for you. You'll have to install some things on your computer, but you may need this in order to develop. Now we'll go into identifiers and we'll go ahead and create a new one. I'll do an app ID, an app, and we'll do Sign in with Apple YouTube video. com.welearncode.siwa YouTube. And then I'm going to scroll down and do sign in with Apple right here. And I'll click continue up here. Then I'll register. And then I'm going to add in a services ID. So I will click plus next to identifier. So I did this drop down to do services ID and then this plus right here and then continue. So I'm going to use that same backwards URL that I used before, which was com.welearncode.ca YouTube, but this time dot added dot SID to the end of it. This is necessary for the Amplify end. So make sure to have that dot SID at the end there. The other thing that you'll want to do is make sure that this is your own URL instead of mine. So don't add it to my wheelercode.com add it to your own domain. And then I will go ahead and add my description, which will just be this. You'd probably want to add something a little bit better for a production app. And then I'll register this. And I'll need to make sure to check that sign in with Apple and then configure. I'll choose my correct app ID for this as well. So in this case, it's that sign in with Apple YouTube video. And then this is where I need to go back to that Amplify console and take this URL. So I'll copy that and then it needs to be pasted into this box right here. So this one, you can just do the exact returner URL. And then this one, you'll do that same URL, but you'll cut off the HTTPS and the OAuth IDP response from the end. Then you'll click next and done, and then continue and save. The last thing that I need to do on the Apple side is to create a key. So I'll do see what YouTube and do sign in with Apple. Then I'll do configure and then I'll add this YouTube video app ID. And then I'll click save and continue and then register. 
So I'll download this key here and then click done. So now on the Apple side, we're good to go. What I'll go ahead and do is I'll go back to this admin UI here and I will upload this private key. So I'll choose that file that I just downloaded. So this one that's right there, I'll go ahead and upload that. You can also copy and paste it up to you which one you choose. And then in here, we need that we learn code see what YouTube.sid. So this one needs to have that SID at the end as well. It's the services ID. And then we need our team ID. You can find that in here if you go to identifiers. And then we go with the see what YouTube video. And then this right here, this ID is your team ID. It's also up here if you want to copy it from there instead. So I will paste that in. And then I need my key ID. So I'm gonna go back to my keys, take this, and then copy and paste that key ID. Now I need to have a sign in, sign out redirect URL here. I'll run it on port 3000 since it's a React app. If you're doing something other than React, you'd probably want to do something other than port 3000. Make sure it's also HTTP instead of HTTPS, unless you have that set up for your local host, which I do not. Then I will go ahead and deploy. Now that authentication is deployed, we're going to set up a local React app and pull this into it. I'm going to go ahead now and run npx create React app. Sign in with Apple YouTube. Now I'll change into the directory that I just created and install AWS Amplify. While that's running, I'm going to copy the local setup instructions for my app. I'll run that. So I ran Amplify Pull, now VS Code, JavaScript, React, Source Build. I'm pretty much just printing Enter all the times here. Then I'm gonna open up my text editor. So you can see that Amplify generated a bunch of files for me. You don't really need to worry too much about them um, unless you're trying to do a more complex use case. So I'm going to go into my index.js here and I'm going to import my AWS config from my AWS exports, import Amplify from AWS Amplify, and then amplify configure with that AWS config. So now I've essentially linked my front end to my Amplify back end. Now I'm going to go into my app.js. I'll clear out this logo and everything that's currently within my app return. I'll import use state and use effect from React. I'll also import auth and hub from AWS Amplify. So then inside the body of my app component, I'm going to get my user and set user equal to use state with null right there. And then I'll go ahead and implement the return. I'll create a div right there. Now I'm going to also clear out that return and I'll add in an if else here for whether the user is authenticated or not. So first we'll go ahead and just return like 
each one hi for if there is a user and we'll do the signed out user first so if the user is signed out we will do button sign in with apple and we'll add an on click handler So we'll do auth.federated sign in and the provider will be sign in with Apple. And I forgot to put in the return. So I need to have a return right there and put that in parentheses. And then you can see that we have this sign in with Apple button right here. We can click that. It will ask me to sign in with Apple right here. So now we need to implement everything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a use effect here. Inside of this use effect, I'll do hub.listen for the auth event and do payload event data. And then in here, we'll have a set of conditionals for what the event is. So Hub is essentially listening for different auth events, and based off of those, we'll do different things. So if event is equal to cognito hosted UI. Then what we'll do is get user, which we'll implement in a minute. So we'll come back to that. Else if our event is sign out, then what we'll do is set user to null and we'll implement a sign out button in a second as well. Finally, if our event is equal to a cognito hosted UI failure, we will console.error sign in failure right there. So then what we need to do now is do this get user and then set our user with that, that user that we're getting. So function get user and we'll do return auth.current authenticated user. This is our get user function here. We'll wait for the current authenticated user and then what we'll do right here is we'll do get user and then with that user data that comes back, we'll go ahead and do set user with that user data. So now the last thing that we need to do is to add a sign out button and also display the user data on that page. So. I will remove this hello and create a div here. I'll say the user is the json.stringify with our user.attributes. And then we'll also have a sign up button. So button on click equals auth that sign out with a sign out right there. So now we'll click on this sign in with Apple, which works. I didn't have to re-sign in because I was already signed in. And now I get my user and my sign out. Now, if I click sign out, I get the sign in button again and I can keep 
doing this. Amazing. So to recap in this video, we implemented sign in with Apple using React and the Amplify admin UI. We then built an interface so that you could sign in, display the user and then sign out. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any other ideas of videos that you'd like to see, please leave a comment below, leave a thumbs up on the video so other people will see it and then see you next time.